So I'm going to start from the side gate of the house, which is, to be honest, it's our main entrance in and out of the garden. Um, so this is where I am most happy with the garden this year. The fig trees have grown considerably, give me good canopy. The formium looks great. The Sycamensis, Musa Sycamensis looks quite good. And I think I've got about four or five stems now. Persicaria is spilling out. All of the new fans I put in have taken. My houseplant cuttings that I took have taken. So it's just genuinely looking really good. Um, and then obviously I've got the Vegesia through there. The giant Miscanthus behind here is all doing really well. Um, I went to my local garden centre a few weeks ago and they had uh, all of their summer bedding plants reduced down to a pound so I bought lots, just lots. Uh, I bought loads of the Collier, so these Collier's were a pound each. The Eucomus bulbs were already in and I finally got round to finishing or 99% finishing this little pathway down here um, the path is almost done I just need to get a few more of these ridge tiles which is just getting down to the reclamation yard um, so let's take a little look at these so these are the canna musifolias and then I've just got a couple of little bidden plants uh, I cannot remember the name of this plant but it is what I also bought for down there then you'll see some bits of Lismachia that are looking a little bit sad and a few bits that are more than likely dead but I did push them right in so the roots will hopefully still be good um, and then there's some more over here that's growing really well and then a Begonia griffin but just a few little bits and pieces like I say the biddens and the Begonia the Coleus and whatever this is were all a pound each so it didn't really cost me a lot to fill it um, uh, the, what I am finding is that I want a big mirror at the end that's incredibly expensive so I think I'm going to have to try and figure out some other way to suggest that the path is continuing then we'll go through this way this uh, Vegesia I think this is Morellii uh, needs a good cut back a little bit because it's just leaning over the path here quite a bit but the hardy impatiens has done incredibly well this season uh, it was obviously a new plant this year and it seems to have done really well thankfully the rabbits either haven't found it or don't like it which is great uh, another little griffin the hostas obviously being slug damaged a little bit and then the ferns the fatsia I don't know what I'm going to do with this fats here. This year it's just been absolutely awful. It is obviously coming through at the base better. Um, so it might just be that I have to cut it. But this new growth was doing really well. And it's just gone all yellow again. So I'll have to have a little think. Can't imagine it's too much light. Although this uh, oriental uh, cherry blossom tree doesn't give you know heavy shade and then back to my old game of buying trays of plants obviously these were the one pound for six little salvias they're already in flower and I've just left them here for a couple of weeks but all of my little bits and pieces are all doing well even got to see some buds on these hibiscus my tray of dahlias that I bought about three months ago is still sadly in their little bits, probably well over these flower need dead heading, but we'll see. If I get round to it, I'll get round to it. And the coleus in there is uh it's been underneath the uh power line so it's had bird poop all over it, but hopefully we'll get that through this winter again and I will find a spot permanently where it can go out. Melianthus is doing well. The Crocosmia is out in full flower now. I did finally get the enthusiasm, as I say, after a long kind of hiatus of clearing out all the nettles and there was a big thistle here. Um, this Sophoria Sun King is doing okay, but I, 
I don't know whether I really like the the shape of it. It's it's quite uh, leggy, shall we say? So I don't know whether it's maybe because it just needs more sunshine down here. And obviously this hot, huge canner is kind of casting quite a bit of shade. But I might just need to find something else to go in here. Maybe a tree fern. Because I've got the tree fern there. And I could run the a tee off of the hose pipe to water this crown as well. Then turn myself around. All of my little plants are all doing well. Tetch Panics Pups. These are the two that have survived. They're doing really well, which is quite impressive. The uh, hanging basket with the Corneogramma fern, it dried out really badly a few, about a week ago maybe, a few days ago. Um, as is the Lismaki, but it seems to have come back. So hopefully, if I give this a weed out, it will uh, pick up again and then next year the fern will look even better. Runner beans done really well. This seems to be the best spot in the garden for runner beans. I mean, look at the size of that. That's ginormous. They're actually at the point where they need to be picked, otherwise they're going to go stringy. My uh, New Guinea Patians has done really well down here. The begonia is looking good. More begonia in the ground. The hosta here is just not done any think at all this year that's that one down there and the rabbits did find the soft crest here but it seems to be growing because there's leaves that aren't eaten so we'll see whether they remember it there and whether it survives oh, get myself up then over the back here the gunner you can see there all the weeds around it but the gunner is doing really well this year so hopefully that will continue to build up the root stock Xantidecia Hercules is doing well in its spot and some Crocosmias that I desperately need to cut back. Ligularia, oh, I'm going to have to give them a water. They uh, always dry out here because there's not a lot of soil and what soil there is there is obviously being drunk. Uh, the water is being taken up by the hedging and the, the huge trees overhead. So... The Przewalski I might keep because it's got a smaller leaf so it's not quite as bad. Um, but the Desdemona that's there I think is going to be lifted next year and divided and used further down in the garden where I think it will do better. The hibiscus here, I think this is the first year. It might have flowered a couple of times now but... This is certainly the first year we've had this number of flowers and it's got more and more buds on there so I'm really happy with this. This was a, a really cheap plant we bought a few years ago at the end of the season. This is where the Lismachia from the uh, new path bed came from. I literally just, it was all across here and this is the bit that I just pulled out. So uh, I'm not sure on Liz Mac here if I do need some more uh, cuttings. This bed is doing okay. It needs a little bit of TLC. I pulled out some of the big thistles. I'm just going to leave the weeds in here. They're in here. Um, they stop it drying out too much. The Achillea, the left and the right one are doing okay. Actually no, the right one is flopped over. I haven't got a stake in it. But I need to remember to put some bits in to hold them up high the canner is doing really well and then i just need to find a ground cover plant which just might be some kind of persicaria to be fair just something easy and simple to grow um, along here and then i'll turn myself around for the raised bed still protecting it from the rabbits because they are still constantly eating all of my plants and i know that because this little um iron cross was full of new leaves and they've come through and eaten it all so they're still definitely here but we have loads of buds on the brogmansia which is doing really well the new planting for the formium and the hookah is doing well the choice here is doing really well this year i need to decide how much i'm going to let it grow in width i want a bit more height but i don't know how much more width i want 
some Salvia Amistad is doing well. The tracky that I put in is doing reasonably well. I think it's reasonably secure now. So hopefully that will uh, be good. This bed is not as much of a mess as it was a couple of days ago. You can see the wheelbarrow and uh, trolley there are full of the thistles and all the bits that could easily be pulled out. Lots of dahlias out and flower in this main bed. Again, I haven't even bothered deadheading them this year because I lost the uh, enthusiasm for it. But I might actually, after this video, go and do that because they're looking really good. And the bees are actually enjoying them as well, which is nice to see. You see here some of the amaranthus that I planted this year has done really well again, along with the nasturtiums. I'm thinking next year this bed is going to obviously have all the stuff that's normally in it permanently. I'm going to definitely grow more nasturtiums because they're great. Um, and obviously they are, the flowers are edible on them. The amaranthus I think I'm going to do as well because I really actually quite like these tassels. They're kind of interesting and I literally I planted them as little plug plants and I know it was wet at the beginning of the season but just kind of left them to it so as long as I watered them well. I mean that flower is about two foot long. Um, Pink China is in here as well. So as the next year they'll be doing better. They'll grow bigger. And I've got some eggplants in here as well. Some aubergines. So next year this is going to have some French dwarf French beans in there I think. Um, as the main kind of filler plant effectively. Some of my wife's fuchsias. The mangoes that I bought, they seem to be really enjoying the hot weather. So they're looking really good and getting some little pops off of it, which is nice. Some little tomato plants that were just found kind of hidden in the greenhouse. Some nicotiana. Apparently variegated nicotiana. Well, I don't see any variegation, so uh, I don't think uh, they were quite what they were meant to be. But hopefully we'll get a few flowers. Um, let's see if I can see the thing I find with Nicotiana and the Amaranthus is that's the size they were when they went in about three months ago. So some of them take off. I mean, they flowered, so they're not going to try and get any bigger. But sometimes they just get stunted and then don't want to grow anymore. The Arbutus anido in the centre here. Let me stand up is doing well after the rabbits strip the bottom you can see there's a new little shoot there next to the nettles some more of the amaranthus the formium that i got from a customer's garden seems to have taken really well the um, flower spikes are what were already on it when uh, i moved it so they're not new flowers unfortunately but this bed will look really really lovely once the uh, brogmancy comes out and flowers because it's must have 30 or 40 flowers on there at the moment. Eucalyptus. I need to do some pruning too. I've got a couple of branches that have died off on it. Um, and it's currently, I mean, this is head height. So it's just in the way a little bit. I did clear the garden at the beginning of spring of all the Tetrapanix pups. And they have probably tripled or quadrupled in number. And the grass that was there, or is still there, that I haven't removed, um, last year did seed, and these are all the seedlings. So I need to get in and pull them all out. But this bed is going to have a little bit of a rework, I think, because this grass is going to come out. The sink's going to go in its place, um, so I can see more of the pond and give me an easy access into the pond, because at the moment it's awkward. So you'll see the pond is full of blanket weed because I haven't got in there um, and some of the oxygenator is re-sprouted so I'm going to get in there with my waders and give it a good clear out. Turn myself around. The Melva tetrapanics plant is doing really well this year and has recovered from the winter. More nasturtiums that I sowed have done well. The hosta down here has done well. This bit at the end here I need to again clear out and figure out what I'm going to do. These crocosmias, while the flowers are gorgeous, just take up too much space. There's 
Musa Bajo here, there's Crocosmia lucifers, there's a Hemorrhochus daylily, there's the Rian Palmatum, and then there's also the Draconculus vulgaris under here as well. Um, and it's just too much. So I think the um, Crocosmia is going to come out and maybe the Draconculus is going to get moved somewhere else. The bamboo has done really well this year. Obviously all the rain. Um, I've taken off the lower leaves of these and then I'm going to start stripping out the inner ones as well to see a bit more of the stems. My dog has continued, even with canes, that you can see have been knocked over, to use this as his run-through instead of using the albeit weedy path to go and bark at the neighbours um, so this has taken a bit of damage so I think next year this is going to be divided and um, protected a bit more I'll move another clump maybe further along so I get a couple of them the akebia has done well rabbits did chew off one stem but it's reached the top of my trellis so I'm happy there the acanthus is let me go through and turn around for you because they look great at the beginning of spring but because they're in full sun they just seem to look real real bad at this time of year you know, they're all spotty so um, I'm going to have to have a little think about whether I want to move them and get something a bit more sun tolerant and move these to maybe a shady point in the garden the canatani you can see there is just getting a flower spike up on it these tetrapanics are doing well as are we'll go in the greenhouse and I'll show you the tomato plants tomatoes are doing well not as well as in previous years but they're not doing too badly I came in because my wife I think she got a bit exasperated that they were you know, doing the usual rotten bottoms or splitting. Um, that's probably the worst one this year. And we did take off one that had uh, got the uh, rotten bottom on it. But I came in and thinned them all out and uh, tidied them up for her. Cucumbers have done well. They always do well. We've got lots of cucumbers on the plant. Um, the melon doesn't seem to be doing anything, unfortunately. We've got and had a lot of flowers but we just don't seem to be getting any fruit so I'm guessing I think I've had more than one in there is that a melon that might just be the cucumber it might just be because we only had one so they're not it's not able to self pollinate which would be a shame but the peppers are actually doing really well this year so uh, we've got some big ones in here and look at the size of that Looking forward to actually having that one. These ones, getting a bit of colour on this one, which is really good to see. And I mean, they were going to go into some much bigger pots. Um, these ones here, that's literally what I bought them for, but never got round to potting them on. So they're just in there, one litre pots. But they still seem to be producing, you know, a few chilies, which is, um, I think they're chilies, or they might be peppers. So, you know, we'll see. We've got some oregano here by the looks of it. Yeah, oh lovely. And then the basil, again, just got to the same point where it's in the little potting on trays and uh, never got round to potting them on into bigger plants. So they just kind of sat there. And then we'll take a little walk down here. The roses are continuing to bloom. They need to, a quick deadhead at some point. The catalpa has done well. Um, this is going to be the bed. I was wondering what I was going to do. I really love the fern. Um, I think it might be a Dryopteris. I'm not entirely sure. I'm no good with ferns. Um, but I was going to get more and basically just help fill them out along here. Although this is maybe a bit more sunnier than this spot. But what I'm now thinking is I don't want to spend more money on more plants. So the Ligularia desdemona that's up by the pond that I said I'm going to lift and divide is going to come down here. So we have the big round dark coloured leaves combined with the dark uh, leaves of the dark elders. 
and then we'll have the kind of palmate leaves of the peonies down here and the peonies I might pick up a couple of different ones um, because these are just divi divisions of the one that was here which is just a basic pink and it's not really my kind of colour and then I need to find something big to go in the back there um, just in front of the begenias because I've got some I think it's canna tanny there and then that's canna panache the tanny I think is going to come out because it doesn't get enough sunshine um, the panache I'm not worried about whether I get flowers or not there's just really for leaves and I had to divide the plant because it was going to split the pot um, so I need something there and then I'm going to fill it with some kind of uh, cover plant that's going to give me colour through the summer and then we'll turn around this bed I've given it a good clear out which is where most of these weeds came from so we've got some runner beans that aren't climbing up my poles uh, but it's attached itself to the mesh which is going to be interesting because I do need that piece of uh, fencing for the chicken coop that's what it was built for the courgettes have only recently gone in along with the I think that might be a pumpkin um, so they've only just gone in but they seem to be doing well which is good to see and then some more runner beans that I've uh, cleared and then attached to the poles so hopefully they'll actually grow up and we'll get some some beans off of them and then the last bit down in the bottom of the garden I'm so pleased this seems to be <laughs> I'm going to curse myself here this seems to be growing well the Clematis omandii I think this might be apple blossom but this seems to be growing well so hopefully it will continue and fill this with some evergreen leafage the honeysuckle on this side has done well and it's kind of coming overhead Musa Baju the Aya divided from the garden pond last year and moved down here is very slow this year but it's because it's probably only a very small bit of the the root that survived winter and then the New Zealand privet hedge is doing okay you know far a few bits where some did die off what's still alive seems to have bounced back I think because of how wet it's been this year I think it's just been so dry because we have some huge trees here some poplars and you know um pears pears plums so then quick look out over the paddock at the moment because it's full of giant no not giant common hogweed so um it seems to be everywhere around here at the moment and down at the very bottom is just full of thistles and then the chicken coop that we finished today so that is very late July, beginning of August garden tour. Uh, I've been talking for quite a while. I'm going to go in, have a cup of tea and um, maybe think about next year. <laughs> and uh, hopefully try and keep some enthusiasm through the rest of the summer and come out and you know carry on tidying up so I don't have a huge mess to start with next year. That would be very good. So I will see you again all shortly.